Gracie, help me out. Huh? Why? Well, my wife told me that I have to pay for all our living expenses except for groceries. I overheard this conversation at the trendy restaurant where I went to have lunch with a friend. Seated nearby was a man I recognized, chatting with a woman I'd never seen before. The man was my husband. Yes, I had stumbled upon my husband's infidelity. My name is Heather, and I'm a 27-year-old part-time working housewife, married for four years. My husband, Isaac, is a year younger and works part-time at a restaurant as a freelancer. In college, I found him cute and didn't worry too much about him not job hunting. I naively thought that as long as I worked hard, our future would be fine, not giving it any serious thought. But after marrying him upon his graduation just because we were going out, I began to feel uneasy about his $1,300 take-home pay. At that time, I was in my second year of working and earning $1,900. We could make ends meet, but I worried about what would happen if we had a child. Before our wedding, my in-laws were very concerned about our marriage. Are you sure you want to marry our son? You're still young. Maybe you should wait until Isaac's job situation is more stable. I didn't understand the meaning of her words at the time. Living with my parents, I never had money troubles and didn't comprehend the significance of supporting ourselves after marriage. After experiencing the challenges of marriage, I realized how naive I had been and often regretted rushing into it. In the beginning, I was determined to make our marriage work, believing I had to put in more effort. So I started a side gig working from home in addition to my regular job. Surprisingly, it suited me well, and after three years of marriage, I quit my full-time job to focus solely on working from home. Our lifestyle improved, and we managed to save a considerable amount. We were financially stable enough to welcome a child, but unfortunately, we still couldn't conceive. Isaac kept quitting and starting part-time jobs, so I suggested he become a full-time house husband. Hey, I'm earning a decent amount, so you don't have to push yourself to work part-time. I want you to be a stay-at-home husband and support my work. But he made a disgusted face at my proposal. What? You just sit in front of a computer typing all day. No, I'm working. You quit your job and made me work. What do you mean you're earning? I'm supporting us, and if I quit my job, we won't be able to make ends meet. I didn't know what he misunderstood, but he said that. Remember when I told you I wanted to quit my job because I could earn more working from home? I guess you didn't understand me. What? Working from home is just pocket money. Leave the work to me, and you take care of the house. Hey... You wouldn't say that if you know how much I make. I tried to show him my bank book, but he refused to look at it. Thinking there was no problem with them continuing to work part-time, I dropped the subject. But then he started acting strangely. I had received $700 for living expenses until now, but he stopped paying even that, and his time at home outside of his part-time job gradually decreased. One night, when he came home drunk, I complained. You know, you also use electricity, gas, and water in this house, right? At least help with some living expenses. It's true I wanted you to become a full-time house husband, but since you decided to continue working part-time, I've been doing the housework. And because of that, I've reduced my working hours. Also, where have you been hanging out lately? But he just glared at me, annoyed. Shut up. I'm the head of this household. To you, I'm your master. Wear a maid outfit and welcome me home saying welcome back. You're a full-time housewife. Don't do side jobs. He yelled and fell asleep on the sofa. 
fine. If you insist, I'll focus on housework. I said, smiling at the drooling Isaac. The next day, I apologized to my clients and informed them that I wouldn't be able to continue working once I completed my current tasks. For the next few days, I focused on finishing my remaining work, and eventually, I became unemployed. Even so, we could afford to live comfortably because we had plenty of savings. I could live without working for about a year, so I didn't have any problems. When Isaac came home from his part-time job, I told him, Isaac, I've decided to quit my side job, just like you said. He smiled a little. Really? You finally realized I was right, huh? Yes, you were right. Of course. I'm working hard every day, and I'm more important than you, who just earns a little money by playing with a computer at home. Yes, it seems so. Although annoyed by his tone, I still handed him a cash card and a bank book with a smile. It was a newly created card, and I had already contacted each company to change the direct debit to this card. I have a favor to ask of you, my wonderful husband. What is it? It seems I'm not good at managing money. I can't make ends meet with the $700 you give me, and you didn't even give me living expenses last month or the month before. Don't you have any savings? I didn't know you were so careless with money, Heather. Yeah, it seems that way. That's why I want to leave it to you. If that's the case, leave it to me. $200 a month should be enough for food expenses, right? You should be able to manage that. My strategy of appearing submissive seemed to work, and he confidently took charge of all the payments except for the $200 a month he gave me for food expenses. Of course, $200 wasn't enough for food expenses, so I covered the difference with my own savings. The first rent payment seemed to go well, but as he watched the bank account balance gradually decrease with each payment for electricity, gas, and phone bills, his face turned pale. When I casually asked, How's the money management going, honey? He forced a smile and replied, It's going well, of course. I'm the best at managing our finances. If we don't have enough money, let me know. I still have some money from my side job. I don't need to rely on such a small amount of money. All right. Next month, the water bill will also be deducted, so be sure to let me know if you're really in trouble. What? The water bill? His face turned pale, but I left him with a smile. Currently, Isaac is supposed to be providing $1,100 for living expenses, excluding food. But since we've always been living frugally, there should be no problem. We chose a cheap apartment for rent, and our utility bills are just a little over $100. We have no debt, and our internet and phone bills aren't that high either. With some tight budgeting, our expenses should be around $1,000. He can use the extra $100 as pocket money. In fact, I've saved the money he has given me for living expenses until now, and I have about $20,000. If he needs more pocket money, he can either increase his part-time work or switch to a better paying job. I think it's up to him whether or not he wants to do that. But I didn't know anything. I had no idea what he was doing behind my back. One day, I went to a trendy restaurant that was popular recently for lunch with my friend Iris. It was a popular place among women, and there were a few couples inside. We ordered the popular menu items, took some selfies, and had a fun time talking and laughing about recent events. At that moment, I heard a man's voice from another table. Gracie, help me out. Huh? Why? My wife actually told me I have to pay for all the living expenses except for food. You're married? Yeah. 
My wife used to take care of everything around the house. Then why don't you ask your wife to do it again? I can't do that. I boasted and said something stupid. She must have gotten mad at me and decided to let me handle the living expenses. I looked at the table in surprise. It was Isaac and a woman I had never seen before. The woman was a young girl in her 20s. She was just the type he would like. When I told Iris that one of the people in the couple was my husband, she became very interested and started recording their conversation on her smartphone. Was it a lie when you said you were working part-time for your dream? Huh? Oh, did I say that? But you know, you can actually make a living on a part-time job. He was laughing foolishly, and the woman glared at him. I thought I might be okay with marrying you, but wow, you're the worst. If I were your wife, I'd definitely divorce you right away. Who else but your wife would put up with a broke, freeloading man who asks for help after spending all the money on her? Don't ever contact me again. The woman said that and stood up, quickly leaving the restaurant. Iris immediately followed her. When I looked at Isaac, he seemed to be crying with his head down. So I stood up, paid the bill at the register, and chased after Iris. When I went outside, Iris had caught up with the woman and said, Can I talk to you for a moment? The woman looked at her suspiciously, so I stepped in between them right away. Um, I'm Isaac's wife. We heard your conversation with him at our table earlier, and we were wondering if we could talk to you for a moment. The woman turned pale and apologized. I'm so sorry. I didn't know he was married until just now. I understand. It's okay. We just want to talk for a bit. Iris, the woman named Gracie, and I went to a different cafe, and we decided to hear her story. It seemed that he had been cheating on me with Gracie for about half a year. She said that the reason he started acting tough towards me was probably because she praised him. I got her permission and recorded our conversation. When I first met Isaac, he was such a gentleman and would buy me anything I wanted. He would always take me to nice restaurants for meals and brag that he was making enough money from his part-time job so he wouldn't have any problems with living expenses. That's why I said things like cool, manly, and reliable and that I liked him, but it was just lip service. Iris nodded in agreement. I see. He misunderstood what was being said to him. That's why he started acting tough towards you, who didn't show him respect as a husband. Respect him as a husband? That's impossible! He only makes $1,300 a month! I've never seen him chasing his dream, and he's always complaining about not having money. He's always getting into fights with other staff and quitting. I think he's changed jobs over 20 times? He can't work in the neighborhood, so he works at a store two stations away. Upon hearing my story, both Iris and Gracie turned pale. How in the world did you manage to have a married life with him? Well, I'm the one who makes more money. Honestly, I'm not struggling financially. Maybe I hurt his pride as a man when I asked him to become a stay-at-home husband? But that's not a good reason for him to cheat, is it? Iris looked at me seriously and said, Of course not. I didn't say anything because I thought you two were happy together, despite Isaac being a freeloader. But if you are suffering, I have something to say. Divorce him. He doesn't care about you right now. I can't imagine you raising a child with someone like that if you ever have one. 
I want you to divorce him before you have children and find someone better for you. I nodded vigorously at her words. Yeah, you're right. I've been thinking I need to work hard for him all this time. From now on, I want to work hard for myself. After that, Iris introduced me to a lawyer who was an acquaintance of her husband. The video of Isaac and Gracie arguing that Iris took, as well as the recorded testimony from Gracie, served as evidence, and the divorce preparations went smoothly. Then I brought up the subject of divorce to Isaac. Hey, do you know a girl named Gracie? He looked surprised for a moment, but then looked away, pretending not to know her. Uh, no, <clears throat> I don't know her. Who is she? You don't know? Could it be that you have early onset dementia or something? You, you're making fun of me again? Your husband? Uh-huh, I am. I showed him the video of him and Gracie arguing that Iris had sent me. You really don't remember anything about Gracie? It seems like you've been supporting her quite a bit for the past six months. Hey, before I took over managing the money, you had about $500 in allowance, right? But from what I hear from Gracie, it seems like you've been spending more than $500. Where did you get that money from? When I asked, his face broke out in a cold sweat and he stammered out an answer. Um, actually, I borrowed two grand through a cash advance. What? You went into debt just to support her? Well, she said that men who spend money on her are attractive. So what about the repayment? There's no problem with that. My hourly wage has gone up recently, and I'm taking home $1,400. I also switched the cash advance to a revolving payment plan, so I can pay it back every month without any trouble. But when I make the payments, I'm left with only $100. I somehow managed to convince her to settle for a cheaper place the last time. As he explained with a laugh, I was left speechless and exasperated. After a deep sigh, I immediately presented him with divorce papers. I can't believe you'd borrow money with a revolving payment plan. You're insane! But how you spend your money is no longer any of my concern. As a severance payment, I'll give you 20% of our assets. I've saved part of the money I've earned and the living expenses you've paid me. It seems pointless to ask you for alimony, so once we're divorced, never involve yourself with me again. Huh? What are you talking about? Even if you say 20% of the assets, it's not that much, right? How can you really make demands with that kind of money? This is why women are so brazen. Since he didn't seem to understand, I showed him the reality. It's $20,000. What? That much? Are you lying? Saying you actually didn't have it just to disappoint me? That's not gonna work. I've figured out these past three months paying for my own living expenses. There's no savings in this house at all. Not wanting to talk to him any longer, I took out my bank book from my bag and showed it to him. You didn't want to see the bank book when I tried to show it to you before. Did you not want to face the reality that I'm earning more than you? Well, too bad. I'm earning $9,600 a month. I have a total of one hundred k in savings. In shock, Isaac looked back and forth between the bank book and me. Anyway, I don't want to be married to someone like you, who's irresponsible with both money and women. I don't even want to divide our assets. If we could cut ties, I'd even pay off the debt you've created. So don't ever get involved in my life again. From now on, we'll communicate through our lawyers, so don't contact me directly. With that, I picked up the luggage I had prepared earlier and left the house. 
When I returned to my parents' house, they greeted me warmly. After returning to their house, I started working from home again. I resumed working with the clients I had been dealing with before. At first, my income didn't increase as much, but after a while, it returned to its previous level. After that, Isaac apparently cried to his parents, but since I was offering favorable terms, we decided to proceed with an amicable divorce without any negotiations. At one point, we had a discussion with our lawyers about the division of assets and Isaac and my in-laws came to my house. My in-laws apologized profusely, making me feel almost guilty. We agreed that the division of assets would be settled in a way that satisfied me and I would transfer $20,000 to Isaac as a severance payment. According to my in-laws, they were afraid of giving him a large sum of money and they thought that even $20,000 was too much. We will make Isaac pay for the debt he incurred. You don't need to pay for it, Heather. We'll also handle the cancellation fees for the apartment and the disposal of the furniture and appliances. We're truly sorry for the trouble our son has cost you. My father-in-law apologized, and it seemed that my mother-in-law had scolded Isaac quite a bit, as his face was beet red and he was looking down. Seeing him like that, I felt a bit relieved. I had been on guard, thinking that he and my in-laws might demand reconciliation after learning about my monthly income, but I'm glad that they were good people. Since then, Isaac has been forced to work at his relative's company, living and working there. His debt was only about two grand, so I think he could pay it back quickly, but he seems to be working like a horse without being able to go out freely. This is probably a good lesson for him, who had always been spoiled and dependent on me. I can only pray that he becomes a decent member of society. As for me, I continue to meet up with Iris and have lunch together. This time, as a token of my gratitude, I gave her a travel voucher. Then she said she wanted to go with me and made travel plans for us. I wanted you to travel with your family! Of course, I'll go with my family too. But you're my best friend, so it's okay to prioritize you, right? She said that with a big smile. I consider myself fortunate to have become friends with her. I want to continue to cherish such a best friend in the future.